Linda, thank you. You've covered things so, so beautifully and so richly, and there is indeed so much for which to thank God. Maybe we could sum it up uh, right away by saying, tonight is a night to remember. Now, I don't mean by that, that several years from now, you're going to say, oh, do you recall November 26, 2014? Wasn't that great? No, I mean, Thanksgiving is a time to remember every day to take time to remember what God gives us, that God is in our every day, that God is giver every single day. And we need to remember and never forget and never take for granted the incredible richness of life. Our Old Testament lesson tonight in the book of Deuteronomy is all about remembering. Moses is talking to the people of Israel as they have come out of Egypt. They're going through the wilderness. They're on the way to the promised land. And Moses urges them, remember, remember, do not forget. I'd like us to look at that at one time at least together, and then I'll be referring to it several times. If you turn again to page 259, please, in your pew Bible, 259. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. We'll kind of start toward the end, actually, and work backward. Verse 18 of Deuteronomy 8, that's the last verse in the text on that page, about two-thirds of the way down, uh, page 259, just uh, above the lines of explanation on the bottom. Let's read verse 18 together now, please, as Moses says. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. And I'm thinking particularly of those very first words in that verse. Remember the Lord your God, he says. Remember. That's our, our theme tonight. There's a little misprint in the bulletin, but the theme is remember. Specifically, remember to give thanks. And Moses gives us several suggestions we're going to go over together. But in general, in so many ways, Thanksgiving is a time to remember. And no matter what may be going on in your life tonight, even if there are some very negative things in your life, even the most downcast among us tonight can think of something to remember that can stir the spirit and lift the heart with grateful praise to God. It's a time to remember in many ways. I'm glad we remember some of the things that some of our presidents have said, what, 10 or 12 presidents we saw, as this is part of a tradition that's a very holy tradition, and we recall the past. And also, I hope that on Thanksgiving, we take at least a few seconds to reflect on the gift of Thanksgiving that came to us through the earliest pilgrims and then the Puritans who brought that time of remembrance to our land. Matter of fact, I happen to be reading a newspaper article about a church in Fort Worth, Texas that really takes that seriously. Every Thanksgiving morning, they have a service that is designed to emulate almost as closely as possible the services of the early New England Puritans. They really play this to the hilt. It begins with somebody giving a signal on a conch shell, a kind of seashell. And that's the signal for people to come in. They've been outside the church building. They come down the center aisle. The men and boys sit on one side. The women and girls sit on the other. And as in Puritan days, there is no levity allowed. I mean, not the slightest crack of a smile. And to enforce that, they have a man, I don't know what this is called, but it's a, it's a long stick where dangling from one end is a feather and dangling from another end is a brass weight. And that man hits the floor with that three times. That's the signal for the pastor to come in and for people to stand as the pastor walks down the aisle. And then very early in that Puritan-style service, the pastor preaches a, a 30-minute sermon. Now, that is the one place where they really do depart 
from history. <laughs> because it was not at all unusual for early Puritan preachers to be in the pulpit two to three hours at a time. But the congregation feels, let's not have too much tradition. Let's, <laughs> let's not go overboard on this thing. But, uh, but they do keep the tradition of this guy with the stick who during the sermon, to make sure that everybody is paying attention, you've perhaps heard of this, will go down the side aisle, maybe down the center aisle, and if somebody is beginning to nod off, the job of this person, if you're a woman, is just a, a little bit of a, a feather uh, on, the, uh, on the ear. But if a man or boy starts to not pay attention, they get knocked on the noggin with that brass weight. <laughs> and as for some of the other parts of this service that they have, as they try to remember those early days in America, there are no choirs, no musical instruments of any kind, the only music at all in the whole service might be one or two hymns. Usually they are psalms set to music led by a song leader, but always strictly a cappella, no accompaniment. Now, why do I go into all of this? Well, partly the history thing tonight, but, but there's a practical reason, and that is if you came here tonight and weren't quite in the mood, you really didn't have all that much to give thanks for, now you can really give thanks that our services here <laughs> are not like those. <laughs> but we're not here just to remember Puritans, although, although I have to say, that business of the stick during the sermon <laughs> has aroused a lot of fantasy within the earth. <laughs> what, if the, what if the pastor went around as, you know, some, some pastors kind of walk around as they, now, I, I need to tell you, I would be, I promise, very gentle. I would not use, <laughs> I would not use the brass weight on anybody. But if, if I could just tickle you lightly with the feather, it would be to remind you over and over again, one word, remember, remember. Remember to give thanks. To give thanks first for treasures enjoyed, the real treasures of life. And that is very clear in tonight's passage. I'll read this time uh, myself, going back to the beginning now in verses 7 through 9. It says, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. Now, as I'm looking at this list here, probably we would not have things like vines and fig trees and pomegranates real high on our Thanksgiving list and our, our list of, uh, or our letter to God of thanks but you know, we could have so much longer a list than that. Matter of fact, I kind of collect little lists from time to time that I see of things that I might not think of to give thanks for. And there was one that came across my desk fairly recently. I want to read it for you so I don't uh, forget any of this tonight. It's just one sample list that somebody sent me to kind of stir our memories, our faculties of remembrance. What could I remember and be thankful for? Well, try these. Laughing so hard that your face hurts. Taking a drive on a pretty road. Finding that the sweater you want is on sale for half price. <laughs> a good conversation. Friends falling in love. Warm chocolate brownies. Watching the sunrise. Riding a bike downhill winning a really competitive game, hugging the person you love, waking up to smell fresh coffee. Hey, now we're talking real treasure here. <laughs> or how about this, the smell of popcorn at a movie theater, going to a really good concert. Or here's one we'd probably never think of. I certainly haven't. Listening to an approaching thunderstorm. And then far better, I think, watching the expression on someone's face 
as they open a much-desired present from you. Seeing smiles and hearing laughter from your friends. Discovering that love is unconditional and stronger than time. Boy, that's a great one, isn't it? And then this, the last on this particular list of treasures, simply this. Getting out of bed every morning and thanking God for another beautiful day. Come on, now, we don't always remember to do that, do we? Treasures that we enjoy. Don't overlook them. Don't take them for granted. Don't ever forget them. But then this lesson tonight that Moses is giving his people through the wilderness of life suggests another whole category of things for which we can thank God. And uh, we might want to call this one Thanksgiving for troubles avoided. Not only treasures gained, but troubles avoided. From the middle of this passage tonight in Deuteronomy 8, remember the Lord your God, otherwise your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you, now get these words, out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. In other words, don't forget, you could have been in misery the way many of your ancestors were back in the slave pits of Egypt. Use your imagination and not only thank God for that which is before you this very day, but for that which could have been very bad, but which you have escaped or which never touched the path of your life. If you'll allow me a personal illustration, let me tell you something I'd rather forget, but I can't. It does have to do with troubles, big troubles avoided. It has to do with a time when I was driving my car and had a very, very close call. It was years ago, early one morning, it was the day after Easter, and I was starting off on a sabbatical. And I was driving on 119, heading east of Longmont, just this side of Del Camino. And, you know, sometimes at that time of year, this was, again, as I said, the day after Easter, springtime like that, the sun, if you're just in the wrong spot at the wrong time, the sun can hit you right in the eyes. And it did. Very much right into my line of vision. And I'm sure I got distracted by something else, too. But all of a sudden, I saw a truck, big truck, coming across right in front of me in the road. And I slammed on the brakes. Now, I'm not going to say that I missed that truck simply by mere inches, but it was not by very many feet. And as I drove on, very soon, you know how that goes, as the adrenaline rush subsides, I felt like a wet wash rag. And I thought, you know, if I had been distracted one half second more, or if that sun had robbed me of any more of my vision at that moment, I wouldn't be driving this car at all. At best, somebody would be driving me to the hospital if I were still alive. And I thought, thank you, Lord. Because now I know what I should know every day, but now I know that everything from here on out is a bonus. Whatever happens on this sabbatical of mine, I was planning to do a lot of things, whatever, whatever happens down there and. El Paso, and anything that happens beyond that is all an extra. It's all a plus. It's all a gift. And I can thank God richly for such big trouble avoided. I saw a bumper sticker one time that had the familiar red heart on it, and this was the message. It said, I love my life just the way it is and just the way it isn't. What were they saying? Treasures enjoyed, troubles avoided. But who can avoid all troubles? Troubles come. They don't always get escaped from. Sometimes they come in bunches. Sometimes they come at the worst possible time. And so it's so very important that this lesson tonight goes on as Moses very frankly faces the fact 
and very beautifully lifts up the fact that we can remember to give thanks to God for trials endured. Here's how he puts it in verse 15. He led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. Notice he's saying God led you even in the vast and dreadful desert. And remember to thank God for trials endured, even in the deserts of life with those poisonous, as the Bible puts it, venomous snakes and scorpions. There will be snakes on our path. I was hiking one time in the foothills, not too far from here. It was a wonderful little hike until I realized that that little log on the path in front of me was actually a rattlesnake. It's amazing what that can do to your mood as you're walking along. <laughs> You've normally been feeling pretty well. All of a sudden, everything changed. We never know when the snakes are going to be there. We never know when the scorpions will be on the path of life or when life just may feel like an arid, dreary wasteland. But Moses says, remember that and give thanks for that. Three, four days ago, somebody sent me an email with a lot of different sayings on it, and one of them said this, be thankful for the bad things in life because they open our eyes to the good things that we haven't even been paying attention to. Isn't that true? And whether trials in your life are right now mostly safely in the past where you can look back with a safe feeling of memory, or whether you're going through something right now, whether you're going through a desert right now, the word still comes. We need our eyes open to know that God leads us on that path, that he is with us even now, that even when the snakes and the scorpions are there, God is there as well. Let me close with this. Some time ago, I heard that a woman who had been a member of a church that I had been at one time as pastor was having a very difficult time, was in an advanced stage of cancer. She was no longer living in this area, quite a ways away. I called her on the phone. We had a long conversation, and, and she at one point said this to me. She said, you know, I, I can't say I like uh, some of the pains and uh, discomfort that I've had or the fears that sometimes come to me, but she said, I'll tell you this. I have a whole new insight she said, into God's love for us because he has provided so well. And she talked about friends that God had given her in this new home of hers. She talked about many people praying for her and how much that meant. And she said that so beautifully. I said, do you mind if I share those thoughts in a sermon sometime? She said, no, go, go ahead. And she said, please tell people this. She said, tell them it is so important to learn to praise God even in our trials. Her words exactly. Trials endured. She could praise God because she knows Jesus Christ. She knows the trials that Jesus underwent for us so that we could be at the cross forgiven and free for God forever and knows that Jesus was raised from the dead. He is Lord forever. He's in charge forever. He's the one who rules forever, and he leads us this very day. And remember, you can really be thankful for that now and for all eternity. Let's pray. God, however long a list we may write, it does not begin to cover the waterfront of your constant flow of blessings for us. Thank you for blessings too numerous to enumerate, too wonderful even to be able to describe. Thank you, especially, O oh God, for your leading and your love. Bless us now with one thing more, a truly thankful heart and life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>